Yo, good looks to DreadSock.com for sponsoring this episode of Real Notes. Anyone who has curly or locked hair like me knows how sacred a good hair wrap is. A do-rag, a wave cap, a scarf, a bandana, a bonnet, you name it. DreadSock goes a step beyond the average with silk-based head wraps that offer full protection and frizz control for curls from 2A to 4C. They're made of a blend of breathable materials to help retain hair's moisture and preserve hairstyles enough to ensure a few less trips to the salon, all held down with an elastic band strong enough to withstand even the most aggressive head trips. Whether you wear one to bed or wear one on the go, Dread Sock will have you looking fresh and full. Socks come in all sizes, from shorties for short hair and beginner twists to extra large for the longer locked folks out there. Look, y'all, I've been growing my locks for nearly two decades and have been a loyal Dread Sock customer for 15 years. So when I tell you these shits work, I'm dead ass. Plus, they're an independent black owned business that's worth the time and energy. So go to dreadsock.com and use promo code CINEMASAI, that's C-I-N-E-M-A-S-A-I, for 10% off your first order. They won't fall off in your sleep, but they will keep you looking fresh. Thanks again to Dreadsock for sponsoring the episode. Now let's keep this shit moving. What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest this week is New York rapper Yo. We spoke about the Portuguese show Sintonia, City of God, Bottoms, our mutual love for anime and Hayao Miyazaki, the pros and cons of listing your favorite music or movies, his come up as a solo act and his role in the band Poetic Thrust, linking the producer and musician cartoons, and the creative process behind his 2016 solo project Tales Over Tea, and Mirrors, his 2022 collab with cartoons. Come fuck with us. Uh, yeah, but either way, uh, is this your first time out in Chicago or not? It's my third time in Chicago, but first time playing. Mm. I was supposed to play the last time I was out in Chicago. And um, COVID sort of, COVID was started going a little crazy again. And um, yeah. while I was excited to play uh, where I was staying, I was like, oh, I don't want to be the person that, uh, you know, brings a lot of people to this scenario, to this scene or to the show, and then go back to a place and put other people at the risk of getting COVID. So I, I was like, yo, I'm I'm grateful to have been booked, but I may have to like pull out of this show. And um yeah, they were very absolutely. gracious about it. They were like, no, we totally understand. A few other artists um, pulled out. So But yeah, no, that's beautiful, man. Like Chicago is just like they just got good energy out there. They um, do, man. Really, you know, like beautiful music history, fucking like everyone's ready to work at all times. Like <laughs> you, Bro. it's it's it's, it's it's really like mini. I don't want to call it mini New York because that sounds kind of fucked up. But like, it's, a it's, it's got this <laughs> hustle bustle type of type of vibe to it, you know. But their soul Sorry, is like, nah. The, the the soul out here is like different. Um, I had I had a couple beautiful conversations like last night after the show, and even the day before because um, Chris, one of the dudes that I played with, he um, when I got to Chicago, I hit him up. I was like, yo, I'm out here. And he was like, yo, what are you doing tonight? Um, we're having this open jam. You should pull up and like, like play, we could promote the show also. I was like, hell yeah, let's get it. And I ended up sliding. And just meeting some of the most incredible musicians that I've ever heard play. And the thing is, there's like, I mean, I love the New York scene. I love it. I'm a, I'm a part of it. I'm very much immersed in it. But I can also recognize when it's driven by a lot of ego. And it's like kind of masturbatory at times where it's like, truly. I am the focus of this. This is like my show. Like I need everyone to see that I can like rip a solo and play with like so-and-so. And it's just like, yeah, bro, we get it. You're good. You went to like Berkeley or NYU or fucking any of these other like amazing schools where only amazing musicians come out of. But um, yeah, everyone was just like so warm and like gracious. They were like, you, you make music? Yo, bro, put your name down. Let's get it. Like just like musicians like swapping out, playing like just you could tell a lot of them grew up in church just like yeah you know just, just warm everyone was so warm uh at a point during the jam a girl broke out like a, a wooden board and started tap dancing on stage and like let's go it was, it was nuts bro it was nuts <laughs> did she did, did she have the salt too because i know a lot of tap dancers will like throw salt down and like do it like that maybe that's like an old <laughs> old old person thing i don't know but <laughs> maybe she didn't she didn't have any salt but she definitely had the sauce like she was killing it that's hilarious. <laughs> um, 
Shit. Well, that's great. I'm happy to hear that. We could probably dig more into that um, once we like really get into the convo for real. But um, I'm a, sure. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do this drop, and then we can just, and 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 then and then we can just jump right into it. Let's do um, it. Where my brain go? Okay. What's cracking, everybody? Uh, welcome back. Real notes. Uh, end of summer. Well, no, that's not. Uh, let, let me stop that. It's not the end of summer. Summer. We're not in school no more. Um, the summer is not over until the end of September. We got a month of summer left. Like, don't, don't, don't be surprised if shit's not getting cold yet. Like it's still summer, <laughs> like, but, um, you know, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, it's been a beautiful couple of weeks. Um, just a lot going on and it feels nice to sit for a bit. Um, but yeah, my name's Dylan Cinema Sai. Um, got a lot of names, do a lot of shit, be around. Um, and I'm with somebody else who's around. He's not home right now, but he's somewhere else and is around and making all sorts of waves and has been for a while, both by himself and as a member of Poetic Thrust and just all sorts of other beautiful, cool shit. Um, we got, we got Yo, um, Mark Yo. I gotta, I gotta specify because <laughs> long time, long time listeners might get you confused with my friend Yo Phillips, who is a writer, yeah. who's the, who's the only other Yo that I've, you, y'all are the only two Yo's I know. So when I, so, so Yo 21? No, oh, Yo 31. Yeah, yeah. 31. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Yes, yes, yes. That's 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 my man. But this is, but you know, you're also you're also my man. Fucking like you've been going crazy. You've been going crazy for as long as I've known you, which has been Appreciate for you. like a, a grip at this point. Now, uh, uh, yeah, nah, like, but uh, like before I even get in any of that. Thank you for being here. I know you're not home and you're busy, but I appreciate you taking the time. Like it really oh, means man. a lot. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I've been following this for a bit anyway. And we've been meaning to link up and talk and chat, connect, chop it up anyway. So I'm just happy that we both found some time. And when I got your message, I was like, yo, I will stop everything that I'm doing right now. Let's fucking, let's get it. <laughs> and that's, that, that, that's so kind. Like, especially cause it was so last minute. I felt so bad asking so, 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 so soon, but I, I, but yeah, I appreciate you coming through for me and coming through to talk about all sorts of fun shit. Um, Always, bro. Now that I, now that I'm thinking about it, because we met at Purchase. We did, yeah. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah, no, we totally did. Yeah, yeah, no, you, me, and Nakama, and Jaden, and, and like, the whole rest oh, of Poetic man. Trust. Like, <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's so, it's so crazy, because, like, we, because, like, because, like, we were together at Purchase, and then we, we didn't, like, lose touch, but I hadn't seen y'all for a while, and I was mm -hmm. walking through Brooklyn one night. And I, no, no, I was coming home from an open mic Eagle show. He was playing, I think he played Babies All Right. And yeah. I was walking past like some bar and I like, I, I poke in the window and I see y'all playing and I'm like, is that Poetic Thrust? Like, what are they doing here? <laughs> so I just kind of walk in and I like see you and Charles and Jaden and I'm like, oh, what's up y'all? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's just like, oh, hey. And I just come and watch y'all play in this like some random ass bar. And that mm -hmm. must have been like, that must have been like five, six years ago. Maybe yeah, a little longer. Lucy Rouge. That was the spot. Right, man. Like, so like just to, you know, like just to see like the progress you've made, like even since then, mm. like forgetting what happened. I mean, like we'll get into that later, but like sure, sure. Y'all have been y'all have been going crazy and you've been going crazy. The album with cartoons, mirrors is fucking great. I was just re-listening to you. it today. Appreciate like you. there's there's yeah, like you got a lot going on, but before we get into the music specifically, um, you know, I got to ask you the first question I ask everybody who comes That's on here, which was, uh, what was the last movie or TV show you watched that you had a strong opinion about? Man, the last TV show or movie that I had a strong opinion about. Hmm. Actually, there's, there's a few, there's a few, but if, it, if it's like the very last one, the very last show that I watched, um, so I'm currently studying Portuguese. Um, my lady's Brazilian, so I'm, I'm, hey. I'm brushing up my own Portuguese. Um, I've been watching this Brazilian uh, show called Sintonia. And it like gives oh. you, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. But it, it really gives you like the real on what uh, like favela culture is like in Brazil. Because, you know, from a, a Western perspective, I think how our media always portrays uh, these other countries is in like an extremely negative light. Like, yes, like everyone's violent and like poor. And we always show this like one particular shot. I feel like every movie does it. It's like the one overhead shot of the favela with like a, 
a sepia yeah. tone. Like it, <laughs> it's just like kind of crazy. It's fucked up. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But um, just like watching the show and like uh, having my understanding of the language and like the subtle nuances like grow and see what it's actually like and get a, you know, like not a firsthand perspective, but a pretty close perspective of what it's like. I'm like, damn, this is so beautiful and the culture is so rich and there's just so much to learn. But um, it's amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. Nah, so um, where um, where can I watch it? Because I'm, I'm interested in that just off of what you're talking about. Where is it's it? It's dope. Netflix. OK, cool. Yeah, I, had a, I like I had a, binging it right now. <laughs> I had a feeling you were gonna say Netflix because like you were talking about it. I'm like, that sounds like a Netflix ass show if mm-hmm. I ever heard one in my life. Cause like, you know, like I'm 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 actually really interested you pointed that out. Cause like you're saying all this, and the first thing that pops into my head is City of God. City of like, God is a crazy film. Such a beautiful movie. Like mm-hmm. that's it, you know, you know, like that's one where you're kind of where you kind of get those stereotypical shots like you're talking about, but it's also like so much more thoughtful and soulful, and there's just like like the people in that movie feel real and not just like caricatures you know like right. they really took they took all they, they took time to like bring that small little chunk of brazil to life and mm-hmm. like it, it was it was just such a i haven't watched it in a couple i haven't watched it in at least 10 years right. uh, i might actually i might actually watch it tonight to be completely i feel honest. that i honestly might run it back myself too it was a, i remember the first time i watched it and i was like wow like this is crazy like yeah uh, it's 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 just it's so it's so special i feel like uh like not to not to veer too far off track but it's one of those it's one of those movies that i feel like a lot of people i've talked to who aren't like su- or at least who like didn't start out as like super duper movie heads or whatever like that's the one where everyone's like oh yeah like i love city of god you know like everyone's seen city of god yeah, everybody like. you know like or not even should right like not not even to the point where it's like a basic thing to choose it's just like one of those like if you're like a person who likes feelings and mm-hmm. good movies you should just watch city of god like it's just percent. it's it's like i recommend it to everybody whoever yeah it's it's but 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 like you know my uh you know like my experience with um you know with with, with uh, brazil and portuguese culture in general is kind of stilted and that's kind of where it begins and ends Mm-hmm. in a lot of ways just like random like offhand references but like it's really dope that you're like watching it and just kind of like you know immersing yourself in it especially because like your partner your ladies into it like that that's that's super tight i love i love stuff like that there's nothing there's nothing like a movie or a tv show to like help you bond with someone you yeah. know yeah it's like <laughs> I, I feel like not only does it like help us bond but i feel like i don't know i think when you're learning a language to to watch things in that language and again get those subtle nuances about it kind of helps you digest it a little bit better where it's like oh this is how they would say in this particular part of the world as opposed to getting like the western perspective on how we think it's said or like how we think someone would go about saying or explaining something it's like nah instead of asking like the middleman just go straight to the source like this is how we do this this is how we say this Um, exactly this type but I know you're also big on uh, film and shows. I got to ask, what was the last thing that, that you watched? I'm going to flip it on you. Shit, let's go. You, you, not, not, not very many people ask. So, uh, so I the last one, <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> you, son. Um, that's actually, no, no, no. I'm so happy you asked because um, the last movie I saw was, um, I saw Bottoms um, on, okay. what's, what, what's today, Thursday? I saw mm-hmm. Bottoms on Tuesday, like early Tuesday afternoon. How was um, it? I'm not, I, so it, so it was so it was really really good i didn't like it as much as i thought i would like i was expecting mm-hmm. something like people were calling this like the well let, well let me back up i really really enjoyed it i don't know if you know what it's about do you know what it's about i don't i feel like it's been mentioned to me but um yeah i haven't uh i haven't watched the trailer or anything for it so i'm, I'm a little behind so so basically it's um basically it's like a teen sex comedy like an early 2000s like era. Oh like a, yes, I recall. Yeah. yeah, I recall. I did see a trailer for it actually. Yeah. So for anybody else who's listening who doesn't know, Bottoms is a Bottoms is a teen sex comedy in the vein of like Super Bad or not another teen movie or like. But I'm a cheerleader for all my queer cinema people out there. Like and, and like it's um 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 it's about these two high school students. They're lesbians. They start a fight club so they can hook up with cheerleaders. Um, uh, yeah. New York Mag ran this really crazy profile on it and they called it like the lesbian incel comedy 
that like we've all been waiting for and that's like it, it's it's it sounds like shock and kind of like edge lordish but like the movie mm-hmm. is basically that like it's a movie about two lesbian incels who want to fuck cheerleaders and make a fight club to do that you know like it, it like it very much screams like and, and like it was just like like the thing that i loved so much about it was that like a a it's a queer centered teen sex comedy which like uh, those don't really exist so like they're really kind of like servicing a really specific niche that i know exists you know like and like we all know like there are people who like you know like representation's important and it's nice to be seen but it's also nice to be seen in ways that feel like authentic and not just like oh yeah like this person's this person's queer this person's black you know like it like actually Mm -hmm. feels like they were handled with like thought and care and on top of that like it's a movie you know like it's a comedy that's funny and thoughtful but it doesn't try too hard to be like about anything you Mm -hmm. know like it's it's a it's not like a message movie in the sense that like you know like the movie the movie is thoughtful and smart just by virtue of being well written and all the characters being well fleshed out type shit you know like and, and 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 then on top of that it's just a funny fucking movie about like high school students in 2023 who live in some like random like you know i don't want to say middle of nowhere but it's very like it's 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 very like typical suburban high school town you know yeah like it's, it's uh-huh. um but i'm rambling but i liked it it's really yeah, funny good. fucking um i'm iowa de Bire and rachel sanat are great uh marshawn lynch is their teacher and he's that's he's crazy. Inc- <laughs> he's incredible in it like i like i cannot overstate how great he is in it him and iowa de Bire, they carried the whole movie they're, okay they're, they're, I, I gotta watch it it's it's fun as hell like like I, I like i feel like i've been talking to a lot of people recently about like because you know like comedies aren't really a thing in movie theaters at this point they haven't been for like five six years they're slowly starting to figure mm-hmm. out ways to bring them back but this is the first one where it's like oh they nailed it you know not even just because it feels mm-hmm. like you know, like it feels new with it feels new while also kind of working from the blueprint established by like super bad. I'm going to keep going back to super bad because it reminds yeah. me so much of that, you know, like and it, it's it's it just works. I don't know. I, I, mm-hmm. I just it worked. You know, there were um two movies. It, it's I think you make a strong point about saying that like comedies in theaters aren't really like a thing anymore because I feel like one with the, the age that we're in, it's like not in a. I don't mean this in a disrespectful or like any weird sort of way, but I feel like everyone does want to cater to more than one audience. So there's that it's running the risk of being not overly sensitive while at the same time trying to let people know like, yeah, it's comedy, it's humor. Like we're going to poke fun at uh, at certain demographics. And that's just kind of what has to happen if we want this movie to be enjoyable. And I right. think um, at the last two that I saw in theaters, I, I just went randomly because I was like, I wonder how they're going to pull off a comedy in theaters that's like not cheesy. Because I feel like I've seen like movies in theaters with like Kevin Hart and stuff like that. And like, once I know he's involved, I'm like, I, I already know what kind of comedy to expect. Where yeah, I'm like, exactly. it's not going to be like, you know, it's like, it'll be funny if you're like, like a 50, like a 50 year old, like if you're just older, like I think, yeah. It's it's that kind of humor where it's like it's like family older Caribbean humor where it's like oh you would find this funny but like I as a twenty something I'm like like it was okay it was like a mid joke the delivery is like based on him just like acting funny and being like ah like I'm Kevin Hart and I'm like or yeah. like I get it but um I saw bodies 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 and cocaine Yo. bear and I thought <laughs> both of those were fucking hilarious I thought they were so <laughs> funny I was like yeah like do more of this. It's like a new age kind of like, it's like, yeah, we understand all of the sensitive points or things that people are going to get offended about. And we're still going to, we're going to lightly tread over these buttons and get the joke across. And I'm like, I like that. Like, it's, it's okay to make fun of people. Like you're not doing it in a deeply malicious way, but it's like, we can acknowledge the humor in the things that we're going through. And that's what makes it funny. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. And yeah, I saw Bodies, Bodies, Bodies too when it first came out. And like, you know, like that's one that like, once again, you can tell, like, you can tell that the people who wrote and created Bodies, Bodies, Bodies really understand the thing they're, you know, like, they're, you know, like they're poking fun, but in a way that's like, it, you know, like, they're, it's, it's like, 
I don't want to call it loving because the, like the whole thing not loving that movie is actually kind of very vicious. But in like a oh, yeah. like it, but like but like it, but like if it doesn't it doesn't feel like they're doing too much ever. Like it's like they're making points. They're making mm-hmm. points they need to make. And, and like the my favorite part of the movie still is the ending when like you know, like the whole for any uh, I'm about to spoil the shit out of bodies bodies bodies. Yeah. Right? <laughs> But like, you know, like for anybody who hasn't, it's about a bunch of it's about a bunch of like kids in their early twenties who show up at like one one of their friends' houses, and uh, people start dying, and they think and, and they're playing a game they call bodies, 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 which is basically like live clue kind of sort of, mm-hmm. and like, you know, people start dying during the game, and they're trying to figure out who the murderer is, and at the end of the movie, um, the original person who winds up dying, uh, Pete Davidson's character. Uh, they all thought he was murdered. It turns out that he just he just fucking slit his own throat by accident <laughs> trying to make a TikTok. You know, <laughs> like, it's crazy. I was like, just, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that shit knocked me on my ass, bro. Like, it's like because like because like everybody like starts turning on each other and they start mm-hmm. trying to kill each other because they think somebody's coming after them. And the whole time, the guy just accidentally killed himself. Just you know, like to open a bottle of champagne with like a katana or something, or like a machete. Yeah, right. And he just goes, like, so good, man. Like it, it was just like really, really fantastic twist, you know. And and and, and mm-hmm. like once again, it's something that like comes, you know, like they're uh they're prodding with love in a way that mm-hmm. doesn't feel in a way that doesn't feel like overly aggressive or like you know, like you getting like nobody's like raging about like PC culture, cancel culture, right. or any dumb shit like that, you know. It's just like and you're like that's why I like bottoms so much because these are people who like get who like get this type of person and just like you know made stuff you know like um what's it called bottoms is a little more bottoms is a little more like aggressive but once again not in a bad way you know like i never leave thinking like oh like i just i i just i just didn't leave feeling like this was like a like a bitter angry movie at least Mm -hmm. at, at least not like the I didn't leave. I didn't leave the movie feeling like I just watched a Kevin Hart movie. Let's put it that word, way. Word, word, <laughs> like, copy. Gotcha. But, okay. Yeah, no, it's tight. Um, I um um, I really hope it gets a wide release soon. But I saw it. I saw it in the city, so it's nice. around. But um, yeah, no, nah, that that's the that's the last movie. Uh, that's the last movie that I saw that I really loved. Um, as for as for a TV show, um, I'm trying to think, what was the last show I've been watching? Um. The le- like I'm I think I'm about two episodes into the the fourth season of Snowfall, which I like. Yeah. Um, or t- seasons two and three are real intense in a good way, but real intense. Um, and then on top of that, uh oh no, I remember I started the news I started the new season of Futurama. That's the last thing. Nice. That I really, okay. okay. Um, but yeah, no, nah, Futurama is great. Um, the new one the new one's not fantastic it's cool it's not amazing but it's you know it's it's still funny uh it's, it's a lot more topical than it used to be like there's like there's like whole episodes about crypto there's a whole new episode about covid that i think comes out this week um you know like, Man, I, I'm, I'm, yeah i'm i'm not i'm not used to futurama being so topical but like it's just you know it's like it takes place in the future they make future jokes and it's funny and i don't know mm-hmm. i like it it's it, it, it comfort food for me I was really skeptical. That's always been about a fun show. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. like super duper skeptical about the re- of the revival because they've revived it like three four times. But you know, it's 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 been cool. I'm not mad at it. Dope, 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 dope. Um, yeah, I feel like I gave you a, a show, but not a, a movie. I've seen honestly, I've seen a couple movies in the last couple of weeks or so, um, whether uh, in theaters or um, just like at home. But it's crazy because like one film that I keep coming back to, I just I love it. And I feel like I find something. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Like when I watch a film, I try not to do too much research about it uh, after I left. Like if I'm or after I'm finished watching it, because I feel like I want to be able to pick up on all of the little things that the directors uh, might have like left in there that uh, you can relate to, like little themes, things like that. Um, so. I mean, I've seen this film like a while ago, but again, I just like keep coming back to it. I feel like on days that are like gray or rainy, I'm like, I just want to digest or feel something. Let me let me watch it. It's this film, uh, Drive My Car. I don't know if you've um... still haven't seen Drive My Car. Man, dog, Drive My Car. 
you know, it's it's so good. It's pro it's honestly it might be one of my like favorite films that I've seen in like a really long time. Damn. It's so beautiful. Just like the way the story is told, it like there's like a quiet intensity about the movie. Like I don't want to spoil it, but they're just the way that it's directed and the way it's shot and framed, everything is so it's like soft. And there's a lot of imagery to it, even in these like more subtle moments between like two or more characters. And I think yeah. the director does a really good job at creating these moments that they're tense, but it's like a quiet, again, that quiet tension where it's like, I feel like some, like you as the, the watcher are like, I feel like something's about to happen. And the mm. moment goes on so long where you're like, yo, like whatever happens next is definitely about to be some shit. And then like nothing happens. And then it brings you to the next scene where you're like, okay, well, this might have been a foreshadowing for the next thing that's about to pop off. But like, they're really good at balancing these moments. I, it's so hard to explain. It's, I don't know. And I think that's the thing that keeps bringing me back to the movie. Cause I'm like, what actually is happening? Like what actually am I perceiving that's happening between these characters? It's, ah, oh, man. It's it's wild. It's so wild to me, and uh, I came to find out that it's based off of um, a Murakami book, um, which yeah. I also think is like drive my car. Um, and one thing about like Murakami, anyway, it's like his writing is very. I, I know he's not like for everyone. Everyone has their own opinion on Murakami's writing, but I like it because there's a lot of imagery and like visual aesthetic to the writing that I personally have drawn influence from. So I think to see that realized in a film format uh, or translated into a film format has just been so enticing to me. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I would definitely recommend watching it. I feel like once you watch it, you'll probably be able to articulate a lot better than I am on what I'm feeling about this film. But I just know that I love it and I'm probably going to watch it again in like a couple months or something like that. Damn, yeah, so I really, I, man, because it's been on my list forever. I just mm -hmm. haven't like actually gotten around to it because I know it's like really long too. Not that that's a yeah. problem for me, but I just I just like haven't. It's it's been on my list since I first because it came out. It dropped what like la late last year, right? Um, no, I, honestly, I want to say it was twenty twenty one. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah, but uh, funny enough, like I didn't catch wind of it until like last year. Um, I, I believe it was twenty twenty one, but I caught wind of it like last year. Um, gotcha. And when I finally checked it out, I was like, wow, okay. Because everyone kept telling me about it, and it was on my list for a while. And then um, I, I, like, flop between the subscriptions. Like, when Netflix doesn't have anything good, I cancel it, and then I go to HBO. When HBO yeah. is kind of, like, whatever, I'll, like, hop to Hulu or something like that. So I just happened to be in my, like, HBO rotation. And um, I was like, wow, I haven't used HBO in a minute. And I was like, let me just see if this is on here. And it was. And I just started flying through it to, like, drive my car then i started watching these like old uh black and white like kurosawa flicks that are like near and dear to me like <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a deep dive that's that's where my uh my eyes and ears have been i love that fucking yeah not like rashomon and seven rashomon. samurai type shit mm -hmm. i have yo seen, jimbo I, like uh, i haven't seen rashomon in a real long time i have the dvd somewhere in my room right now it's 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 sitting somewhere but yeah no curse i was a man of culture always 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 worth having around you know <laughs> seriously yeah no he's the best but fucking um uh let's run it back real quick for mm -hmm. you for like um just just to like your like early experiences like what's the first movie experience you can remember having ever like it could be at the theater it could be at your cousin house like the first thing that comes to mind for you I'm happy that I'm so ready for this question because I was telling mm -hmm. someone the story the other day. I recently got a, a new tattoo and recently being maybe like last summer, actually. Um, I got a tattoo. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, ugh, it's not that clear. It's upside down. Can't, can't really make it out. It's the um, uh, Sen's mask or the wolf girl mask from Princess Mononoke. Oh, my nigga, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro, like, that movie actually changed my life. And it was such a beautiful setting, too, because um, when I was a kid, um, our tenants that lived upstairs from us, 
um, I've known them since I was like born, basically. Like they've been in my life for many years. But I remember like one night my parents were going out and um, uh, they were like, oh yeah, like we'll, we'll babysit or whatever. So um, homie that lived upstairs, uh, this was like way back in the day. We had a DVD place by our house. Um, he went and like rented a, like a big white projector screen and a projector and like set it up in the middle of our living room and we like made pizzas from scratch. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna show you this like film that uh, I think it'll be pretty, I don't know, pretty crucial to your life. And right. the, bro, and then he showed me like Princess Mononoke at like age like 10, I think like 10, 10 or 12 or something like that. And I remember just having my mind absolutely blown. And I was just like, just the animation style alone will do it. It's like solid, got it. But then again, rewatching it in my like later years, because I, I rewatched it again recently and probably like again a year ago or maybe a few months ago. And I was able to digest a lot of the concepts now understanding that a lot of um, a lot of Miyazaki's films are like social commentary films. So like rewatching it, I was just like, oh, my God, like this is what this is about. Like this movie is literally about like capitalism and greed but it just so happens to have the sickest backdrop of illustrations and like writing and character development. And one thing yeah. about uh, Miyazaki that I also like really love, this, the scores are always crazy. Yeah. But um, the characters I've noticed just in like all of, all of the films, like the protagonists are always women. And then I like, I was curious about that. And then someone explained to me that um, there was an interview that he had done a long time ago where he had explained that and was like, he has, uh, I think two daughters and usually kind of writes with them in mind and kind of wanted them to grow up, wanted them to believe that, um, that like, a I guess like in the context of like love or like career based things that their life doesn't need to necessarily revolve around like men, their decisions don't need to revolve around men, which is why a lot of his um, protagonists as they are women, there's usually like, you know how we would watch a movie and like ship two characters together. Like, oh, it's obviously obvious that they're in love and they should be together. The two characters never end up together. In like every one of those films, the characters never end up together. Um, Howl's Moving Castle, they don't. Spirited Away, they don't. The girl goes back home. In uh, uh, Princess Mononoke, like the girl goes back to staying with the wolves. It's like the characters never end up together, which I think is is interesting and beautiful, but it's like, I also feel like he leaves it up to inference where it's like you can you can assume something probably like would happen but i'm not going to tell you that that's necessarily going to happen so i think it's pretty tight yeah nah like yeah nah i i, I love um what's it called i recently um i just saw uh, my neighbor totoro actually um for the first time or, or, not, or not for the first time but I, I i've seen it before but i saw it um I saw it at the theater for its 35th anniversary uh, earlier this year, and you know, like um, I, it um, that, um, that had been the first time I'd seen Totoro in years, but I noticed that a lot more as well. Like everything you just said, and like Mononoke is uh, Mononoke is a really special movie to me too, because that was uh, it was that and Akira that were the two movies that Ooh, like kind of ignited my uh. I mean, like, I, I'm like I had liked anime before that, but that was like the stuff that like really super duper connected with me mm -hmm. on like an emotional level. And I was like, this is like crazy, you know? Like yeah. I saw Mononoke at a friend's house mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I had like never heard of Miyazaki before. No, no, I, I, I maybe I had seen Spirited Away before, but mm -hmm. like Mononoke was the one where I was like, oh yeah, no, nah, this is this is my guy yeah, like, he's forever. <laughs> yeah, he's quite he's, literally he's, built different. Yeah, he's he's just like, just like his animation style is gorgeous. And I love, I love his, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm another huge theme in his all his films is uh um, um environmentalism like he's huge on environmentalism and it just like comes through in the way he depicts not just animals but nature and like you know like mononoke that's you know like that's like a that's like a central theme of the movie because of the whole you know like she's like the wolf girl and she like mm -hmm. hangs out with the animals and like the townspeople are coming in to like mine and take everything out it's wow. like, just like i don't shit. know man yeah. It's just like yeah it's it's just like like you know like a movie like mononoke it's like mononoke and spirited away and like uh, castle in the sky which is one of my love personal favorites yeah you know like just like 
those those are the types of movies like there's like ev- there's like something for everybody in a Miyazaki movie or, or mm-hmm. in like a Studio Ghibli movie in general because like for it's sure. not just Miyazaki but like you know like there's just he's just he's just so passionate and so soulful and so uh just like he just gets it I don't know like it just it. feels it just feels so not na- like everything about his movies feels so natural and organic and like I want to touch it and like mm-hmm. taste it and smell it and like feel it I don't know like it, yeah it's it has like, like an earthy like yeah there's it's beautiful it's it's so well done and I the part of me like hates every time they're like this is his last film he drops like th- he's like the Jay-Z nah that's too much <laughs> <laughs> the Jay-Z of like the film animation world it's like this is the, my last one you know it's, this is gonna be the one and then it usually is hot and then just drops another one after that it's like okay and you know what the crazy thing is about that he's done that a few times Miyazaki doesn't have a kingdom come he doesn't have a magna carta holy grail Mm -hmm. he doesn't have like a comeback project that was like yeah that was just okay I've never seen a Miyazaki movie and walked out like oh that was just okay all of his movies are great Mm -hmm. yeah no like like the wind rises is dope Porco Rosso is dope fucking Mm -hmm. um what else? Uh, Nausicaa. Spirit Away, Nausicaa yeah. in the Valley of the Wind. That like, come on now. Gas. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Howl's like his movie resume Castle. Is, like Howl's. His resume is just like extremely impressive. I'm like, mm-hmm. damn. That's a. Like, if ever I had the ability to like collaborate, like you know how sometimes when you do like interviews or um, I don't know if you ever applied for like residency things, they'll ask you questions like that. Like, if you could collaborate with an artist, like dead or alive across like any span of time or something like that like who would it be and I remember the last time I answered that question I was like it would definitely have to be like Miyazaki or uh like Shinichiro Watanabe or yeah. just like the goats like I'm like man I don't I have no idea what we would do but I would love to make something happen I'm like their brains already work in outlandish ways just throw yeah. my own outlandish brain in the mix and we'll figure something out, you know? Damn. Yeah, nah. Like, it, it'd, be, it'd be beautiful to do something like that. And, and you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Watanabe. I know he has a new show coming sometime soon. If Lazarus. it's not already out. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. Well, uh, when's Lazarus out? Next year. I looked it up okay. this morning. That's exactly why I know that. Because I, I had gotcha. watched the, um, the trailer with my lady like two days ago. And I was like, this is probably the most gas trailer that I've seen in like a hot minute where I was like, yo, the music, the feel of it. I was like, dude, it's, you can tell it brought like, it's like Bebop brought in, like Cowboy Bebop brought into like the year 2050. I mean, and Cowboy Bebop was already set in the future anyway. So it was just like a different or like a recharged or refreshed uh, animation style. But like the flow of it, like watching uh, who I expect to be the protagonist doing these like, uh, uh, parkour, like capoeira esque moves as he as he like maneuvers throughout the city. It's just like, damn, this is it's like Cowboy Bebop meets Samurai Champloo meets like I don't know. It's it just has like all my favorite things. And then to wrap it in a bow, it's scored by um, Kamasi Blind Washington. Oh no, uh, my, yeah. yeah, Kamasi Washington, Floating Points, and Bonobo. And I was like, all right, just give like if I could write you a blank check. And you can just put whatever number you want on it, and I'll pay it. Like that's how immediate I need that shit. I need it yesterday. It's yeah. that crazy. I'm so ready for Lazarus, man. Like it's just, yeah, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be amazing. You know, I feel like you know, like it, it it's it's so crazy because I was um um I was just re-listening to your album from 2016, um, um Tales of a T. I forget oh, wow. what song. It- <laughs> I forget what song it was, but you mentioned, but but you meant, but you mentioned something about Watanabe and Samurai Shampoo on, on on one of them songs, and I was like, yeah, I did, I see you, um, yeah. <laughs> it, I, I I could be wrong. It might be. It's either. <laughs> I think the track is Sake, which has a uh, Nakama on it. This is back yeah. when he went under uh, NV. The name was Vagrant. Um, it's either ah, that yeah. one or it's the track Broken Mugs, where I definitely sample Samurai Champloo anyway. You can hear like the sword <laughs> swings in the background and like, the... yeah, 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 yeah. It was definitely one of those two for sure. But um, that's when I was on my like sad boy, like deep 
deep anime like nerd bag. I was like, yo, I'm about to hit y'all with this heat, but you don't know where my shit is coming from. Like I need you to understand, right. you know. But yeah, I love that project. Wow, it was so long ago. Yeah, no. Nah. Damn. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a little bit because it's it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's it's definitely on my list. But um, I mean, like you already kind of answered this question with Mononoke, but were there um, you know, like as you got older, were there any other movies that kind of like touched you? or like really connected with you on like a, on like a raw emotional level or, or not even like an emotional or like an artful level, but just like something that was more than just like, this is 90 minutes of entertainment, like, like, like a capital M movie. Like when was the first time you saw like a capital M or, or, or another time that wasn't just Mononoke? If, if you, if you have an answer, like don't feel pressure because that was a great answer you already gave. Thank you. No, there are definitely a lot of films that have had uh, pretty significant impacts on me. And I'm like thinking, cause I'm like, I have, I have like three massive lists, lists of, uh, of like films that I've seen and gone through that have just had like these crazy impacts on me. I would have to say, oh dude, um, wow. I can't believe I almost forgot this. Uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was insane. Classic. Classic. classic 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 uh enter the dragon i was like <laughs> i was big on my like on my uh action or like kung fu like foreign film uh vibes like obviously 36 chambers like just like all of them but i i guess on a more emotional level too hmm. <laughs> Man, that's such a tricky question. I feel like the the reel in my head is going too quickly and I'm like, wait, <laughs> there's so many. Um hmm. it, beautiful film. I may have to I may have to circle back to it. One will one will definitely pop up. For yeah, sure. yeah, like no, a, a million yeah. percent one is gonna come up. No, nah, no, nah, that's cool. Yeah, no, nah, um um Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon is like I remember the first time I ever saw the trailer for Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. I had never mm-hmm. seen that was my first time seeing Chow Yun Fat or Michelle Yeoh in anything, Ooh. and and just like watching the movie, it was just like I feel like a lot a lot of people around our age, like that's our that was one of our first big that was one of our first big like martial arts what, what one of our first big martial arts movie experiences that wasn't something that came from America, you know yeah. like I I remember like like that was specifically that's like 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 that specifically piqued my interest in not not like all foreign film in general but like that type of film specifically cuz cuz mm-hmm. cuz cuz I remember around that time it was like Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon um Stephen Chow's uh, Shaolin, uh Shaolin Soccer I don't know yep. if you've seen Shaolin Soccer oh, I definitely yeah. saw Shaolin Soccer um and uh and, and 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 then some years after that his movie I, I mean like Kung Fu Hustle Kung Fu is one Hustle, that I feel like is like his palm like yo that was, <laughs> I saw that one in theaters with, with like all my cousins and we had such a crazy time <laughs> that was that one's a deep cut actually I'm like yo for sure yo um, yeah and, yeah no Kung Fu Hustle is crazy like it would it would like seeing seeing like real flesh and blood human beings get like thrown around and like smushed like cartoon characters was really cool for me. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm big on that mix of like live action and animation in that particular way. So like, it was really cool to see someone like execute that vision. I think about that a lot because of that. And, you know, on top of that, it's a really smart, thoughtful fucking movie about like Buddhist philosophy. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Like it's like the whole thing is about, yeah, it's just cool. It's, it's just a good ass fucking movie. Classic. Yeah. I actually just remembered two. Um, and there's like one because it's in theaters right now. Um, I, I think it might be like a re it's a remade version, but I really like the original, uh, old boy and battle Royale. Oh, hell yeah. Both crazy, crazy films. Like just, I think battle, I mean, obviously like, um, you know, hunger games, that like, whole concept is like straight battle Royale. Yeah. Um, 100%. Oh dude, matrix. Wow. Okay. Like Classic. now, now the gears are like are turning a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I would definitely say like Battle Royale. That was like the first time a concept like that was introduced where it's just like, yeah, like you're in school and what if like one day they tell you you're going on a field trip and then you're like, nah, your parents signed up for you to just like <laughs> get murked or for you guys <laughs> to just like murk each other and only one yeah. of you gets to leave. Like just this like psychological thriller kind of like, damn, it, it's crazy. 
the lengths people will go to to survive or like when when your back is up against the wall like the situations that you're in like the shit that <laughs> you're willing to pull and it feels so accurate it feels just like very true to like human nature i'm just like damn <laughs> like these yeah. kids are going kind of crazy like, and, to, and and yeah just like high school kids specifically you know like the mm -hmm. the like like yeah battle yeah battle royale is a movie that changed my life when i saw it in college mm -hmm. uh, when i saw it at purchase and like fucking um my favorite part of the movie is that one kid who keeps getting fucked up the whole movie and he like mm -hmm. winds up he want he winds up just like with like he's got like he's got like a splint on his leg and he's like mm -hmm. hobbling around with a fucking walking stick and he's like he, i think he does wind up dying at the end he does but like he just, yeah. he, he just like he's just getting clapped left and right and then mm -hmm. he just like shows up and yeah i, I don't know like it's going it's, through it yeah just to, just to like you know like once again like really really simple premise like 30 kids 29 of them gotta die Mm -hmm. you know like the teachers watch it and they, like it's it like like, like the premise couldn't be any simpler but yeah. they really do hone in like you said you know just like on the human nature aspect but like they like they flesh out these characters and they make all the kids so distinct and so like there's so much going on with each one of those kids mm -hmm. you know like there's no character in there who doesn't feel developed enough right you know exactly. like, it, it's just like you know like battle royale in particular is such a great example of like let me take this simple premise and just like flesh this one thing out as well as I can, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just like, it's, it's so granular that it just like, it, it's like broad and granular all at the same time. It's so weird uh -huh. how that works, but it's just, it's just like, it's so ill, you know, it's like I've, I've, I've seen like 80 movies and every time I'm like, Oh, they clearly saw battle Royale. It, it's it's mm -hmm. one of those. You know? it's, like, one of it's, those. It's, it's one of those that like everyone's seen, everyone wants to make their own version of it. And yeah. like, it's just great, you know. Like I've um I've actually been meaning to rewatch it. I want to. I'm, I'm sure it holds up, but like I have the once again the DVDs. I I I got I got all the DVDs, but like it's it's around somewhere in my room. But uh yeah, nice. great movie. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, Battle Royale is really crazy. Close to my heart. Like, yeah, that that one's definitely one of my like. I I would put it in my top ten, for sure. I it's think definitely my top ten. Yeah, I, I'm 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 bad with lists. I don't I don't like uh. I'm I'm not good with lists, but if I did have a list, it'd probably be in my top ten somewhere. <laughs> I feel similarly because like I've seen, I've seen a lot of films. I've seen a lot of stuff, and like even when you asked me the question just now, I was like, wow, I can't even. My brain is having a difficult time cataloging all the things that I've seen. But um, yeah, if I like had a list of all of the films that I've like ever watched, and then I like combed through and like had detailed notes about how they made me feel. And the impact then i would be like comfortable making a list but uh, until that day i probably won't right yeah now nah, i'm just like i i just i just have a hard time ranking shit because like then if somebody asks me again i'm gonna have 10 different answers mm -hmm, you know like mm -hmm. it, 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 yeah like i don't i don't like the whole like who's your top five favorite rappers because like for me like doom's gonna be in there all the time yep. but like the other four are gonna and maybe earl like the two of them are gonna be yeah. in there somewhere, but like the other three could be, you know, like you know, like one day it could be fucking Cash Cobain, the other day it could be Cash Trina. Cobain's the so other so slept on, ridiculous man. <laughs> like fucking like you know you, you, you like you like one day it could be Cash Cobain, one day it'll be Trina, one day it'll be Gangsta Boo, one day mm -hmm. it'll be Ice Spice. Like I can just like it's never gonna be the same five. I don't have like a solid five. I have a solid one, you know, like he's, mm. I got, I got, I got one favorite rapper who's always going to be on my list, but everything else is I just, that. You know, I mean, I have, a, the season, bro. I have a solid two. I would say, um, most deaf and it, well, it's tricky. Cause I, I want to say like Andre 3000, but I feel like in saying Andre 3000, it, it negates mm -hmm. big boy who I actually understand. Mm. Like, even though three stacks is my favorite, personal favorite i can identify that my flows sometimes are more big boy like and even the content is more three stacks but i'm like my flow is definitely like more big boy i cannot I even deny that so it's like hard to like i could just say outcast i could put them as like one one uh space together but also at the same time i'm like they're both their own individual artists that are incredible but if if i'm saving space on my list i would say outcast and i would also say most deaf and then those other three spaces, I'm like, those could be, it could be like Busta Rhymes. It could be, 
I don't know anybody. Sorry, it's loud. My bad. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't hear shit. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. Damn, these yo, these Apple headphones are doing work right now. Yeah, yeah. But Man. point being, those other three spots interchangeable. Yeah, you know, like I did. A, I did some. Um, I did my boy Miguel's podcast like um some years back, and like I, I think like currency, Busta Rhymes, and fucking um Fonte were like my other top five at that point. But like even that's like it, like it's just like I have my favorites, but it's never. I just don't like to. You know, like outside of like the one or two who are kind of like, there are just so many rappers and so many musicians who are like foundational to my, just just like my taste that like I'm never gonna be able to just root it down to just like five, or right, like exactly. ten or even like twenty. You know, like I just I just I, I also just don't think that that's like useful. It's, it's not, not useful. It, it, it's not useful to me. You mm-hmm. know, like I just like that like, like 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 I don't list my influences. I just kind of like listen and i'm like and, and like i can acknowledge who played a role in how the way i appreciate shit but like it's mm-hmm. never i never feel the need to be like oh one two three four five i don't know that it's it's i get it right. I, I i i get why it's useful and i get why it's valuable i just don't think that way that's just my personal preference but no, like I, respect that. I feel like also when you answer those questions about like your top five i feel like people use that as a way to figure out exactly who you are it, it's like used to like pigeonhole you where it's like, if I were to yeah. tell you that my like top five were like all newer artists, like if I said like Pop Smoke, Ice Spice, uh, right. Tyler the Creator, you would be like, oh, th- like not you specifically, but someone would be like, oh, this is like a Gen Z ass kid and he doesn't know anything about music. But I'm right. like, why does my, why does someone's top five as opposed to someone else's top five? There's no wrong or right. Especially being like, yeah. they, there was a, something that Tyler had mentioned in one of, his, one of his interviews about how when people are asked this question, they put in artists that they think other people uh-huh. are going to like to sound like I knew you, I knew this was going to go this way, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I, I was like, yo, I, I literally know people that do that. Because I'm like, bro, I've never once had a conversation about like Tupac or Biggie with you. If I were to ask you to name like five songs, you probably couldn't. You're just <laughs> saying that because that's what hip hop has dictated is supposed to be the answer. Like, personally, I would right. never put Biggie or Tupac in my... Like, if I had a top five, I would never put either one of them there. I'm not negating the impact that they've had on me and on hip-hop and all of the other artists from and after that generation. I'm not saying that at all. But I yeah, also so know yeah. how I grew up. And the music that I grew up listening to, It a large amount of it was not Biggie or Tupac. Like, I genuinely and honestly didn't just listen to much Biggie or Tupac until my, like, later years hip-hop like some people will tell you like they've been listening all their life and i'm like yeah cool for you bro like honestly i don't believe that like me i i think i i actually started listening to like biggie and tupac in maybe like my first year of college before i got to purchase where i was like i think i started taking music more seriously and i was like okay i need to know my history and while i've heard songs from them like maybe it's time that i dive into like a full album or I don't know, just just actually see what people are talking about when they make these like very broad statements about either one of them being like the greatest in hip hop. And I think I'm okay with statements like that. But at the same time, I am also understanding in saying that that's not a statement that I can make because of how and when I found it, you know? Yeah, no, that, that that's that's all good. You know, like I have a I have a lot of feelings about like what Tyler said because like there are definitely people who do that, but at the same time, like he was almost like surprised that like a 16 year old kid in 2023 might be interested in Nas is Illmatic. Like right. I know, but like but like at the same time, like I know there's a 16 year old kid who, in 2023 who's interested in that because I was 16 years old and I was mm-hmm. interested in Illmatic. You know, yep. like you're like Still I interested in you're like you're like you're like that was. Right. Like that was around the time when I started doing my due diligence because like I found doom and then I really started to like dig into like a lot of older stuff. Cause you know, like yeah. I, I, I've, I've told this story a bunch, but like I was, you know, you, you know, like coming up, I was like really into like a lot of like, a lot of like the uh, like mid to late 2000s Southern shit, you know, like rich boy was Damn. one of my favorite rappers Hell coming yeah. up, you know? And like, I just uh, like, he's not wrong because there are, you, because you know, like there are people who feel the need to uh there are people who feel the need to like placate the fucking like the fucking like institution and be like yeah like tupac biggie 
um, LL Cool J, mm -hmm. and then and then they'll throw in like one woman, like they'll throw in like Missy Elliott, just to right. just to just to have one woman on the list, just you to know. Be like I'm, but I'm, like, yeah, I, 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 it, it's it's like, it's 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 just it, it's just like interesting to me because mm -hmm. they uh. It's interesting to me because there are people who are actively seeking that type of shit out. But like, if you're going to, I've had this conversation a lot, you know, like if you're going to like listen to something like, you know, you should be able to like explain why you like it at the very least. Or like, right. e even if it's just like, I just like this thing, you mm -hmm. know, like you can just like, like things and not have to have, you know, you know, like if you like Biggie's everyday struggle, great. It's a fantastic song. I was it's just great. listening to that shit last week, but um, you know, like it, it's, it's like, that's a, that's a that, that's a really interesting and layered conversation that like is uh you know like you know like one of these days I want to talk to somebody who gives me a top five and I want them and like I want them to tell me like Tupac, Biggie, um, LL Cool J and then just like Megalon from Monster Island Zars just to like that throw me be. off for a second and be like what like <laughs> <Right>. oh. <laughs> you know like have it have it be like the three most generic answers imaginable and then just pull out like ill bill from nonfiction, right. like you know like, like, <laughs> like type shit like, like i feel like that's your your quintessential like hip-hop purist <laughs> where it's like they would they would definitely give right. those answers and be like yeah i'm not really like a fan of the new stuff that like mumble rap and then and when i hear that i'm already like i have nothing else to like i don't want to hear anything else you have yeah. to say like you've said everything with that one sentence good day to you sir right you know um yeah, but no. it's funny that automatically you, checked out yeah. automatically checked out but it's, it's funny that you mentioned doom because it's like admittedly when i first listened to doom i didn't like doom and it was a cut like <laughs> it's funny like i didn't like doom because i was like i mean i loved all of the references but i think it was one of it was like my first encounter with a, a rapper whose flow like i couldn't really like figure out I was like, it's so, it's it's like a puzzle. I was like, this is complex. Yeah. And I think because I didn't immediately get it, just, and that was like with my personality type at the time, like if I didn't immediately like get it, I was like, ah, oh, like it's probably not for me. But then um, I like, I like really, I, bro, I like started studying it like a nerd. I was just like, bro, like, <laughs> what is he doing? Like, 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 what is this man doing right now? And some days I like still don't understand it, but I'm like, I have a better understanding of it. And I'm like, oh, now nah, this, yeah, clearly the goat for a reason. Just like, like, wow, holy shit. But yeah, I gotta admit like the, it just, it didn't hit me the first time and it definitely took a, a few like deeper listens. And that's also why I think people need to, like when you listen to an album, I think it's worth listening to it like a second time. Like you can't, I don't think it's okay to form, sorry, that's a general, a very broad thing to say, but I was going to say, I don't think people can form an opinion off of listening to an album one time. You absolutely can. But I think for me anyway, I like to listen to albums multiple times to confirm like what I'm feeling is actually what I'm feeling. Because the same thing happened with Blonde. The first time I heard it, I was like, this was good. It was okay. And then I heard it again and I was like, I'm solid. And then I just heard it in a different context. And I was like, oh, like, I get it. Yeah, got it. Hit. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's there. Solid. You know? Yeah. 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 Nah, fucking, fucking Siegfried. And since we're talking about Blonde, Siegfried stabbed me in the heart. And fucking um, Doom's Potholders is just, I, I, I don't know, man. Once again, like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. You know, like, just like, yeah, like Doom's music is really like a puzzle. And it's. Like I, I don't want to call it an acquired taste, cause like I, cause like I kind of came on really. I, I I I heard I heard Raid on the Boondocks, and I was like, oh, I love this. I heard love it because it, it was because it was um the the Let's Nab Oprah episode. It was Raid, and I'm pretty sure all caps is in that episode too. Mm -hmm. So like those are my first two experiences with Doom, and I was like, oh, this is my everything. You know, like I was obsessed from like from like from jump. It was immediate. But um, you know, it's it's he he's 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 definitely like he's like it's weird because he's he's someone who's both like you can appreciate Doom passively, but like you'll appreciate him more if you do it like actively. Like that's not mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's not just like you can like throw it on and like his his flows his flows and the beats he chooses are so cool that you can just like listen to it and oh, it just yeah. sounds dope. But like when you really like lock into what he's saying, it's like 
the way he rhymes and just like the stuff that he rhymes about like this motherfucker has a whole song about giving a date with bad breath a breath mint Mm -hmm. like fucking operation (laughs) lifesaver is one of my favorite songs ever just because and 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 recently maybe within like the last three four years i heard uh that that remix album that madeline made um where he like just redid all the songs with new beats and Mm -hmm. the song um the song fire in the hole is a remix of operation lifesaver in my opinion that's better than the original operation lifesaver that made mad villainy it's so crazy i love Mm -hmm. that beat one of my favorite madeline beats ever but like you know i just think uh you know, people like him and people like, you know, Frank Ocean, just like Frank. Yeah, like Frank's a whole this. This could be a whole different conversation right now. Yeah, like, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shit. Yeah. And it's already been so crazy. But um, mm-hmm. I, um, um, I want to I want to I want to get some more about you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like kind of similar to the capital M movie question. When was um, when did music become capital M music for you? Like, when did it become? What, what, when did it go from being a passive thing to an active thing for you? Honestly, it was probably when I got to, when I got to purchase. Um, there was a, like a lot of shit that like transpired mm-hmm. at purchase, but um, when I really started locking in with, um, with knock and uh, like the rest of the 99 squad and we um, like, we had started playing shows together or like when we, like I, when I first heard their music or like when I first heard Knox music, and Devoy and like a few other homies, I was like, oh shit, like this, like, and, and I guess like where they're from too, like they had access to the city, but they're from like, uh, like Westchester County. Like, um, so like mm-hmm. in my mind, how I framed rap at that, at that, like, I guess pre purchase was like all of the rap just comes from New York City. Like, if it is outside of New York City, it is something else. Like, I, I don't know what it is. It, it's not bad, but it's just, like, it, like New York is the rap place, you know? And I think encountering them in the music and then just be being completely blown away by, like, the flows and the content and, like, the, the beat selection, I was like, oh, my God, this motherfucker's rapping his ass off, bro. Like, I don't think I've ever encountered a rapper like this. Because also at that time... Um, that was very much in the era of like, wow, ironic. That was in like the era of like pro era. That's when like Joey Badass and like that squad and all those people were like coming up. So it's like the sound of like that, like I would almost, almost say that was when like New York's identity was like a little more concrete. Um, It was like pro era, Flatbush Zombies, Underachievers, like some, like I, I know a good amount of those guys. So I was like, oh, this is what, the hip hop is right now, or like the defining sound of New York right now. And I think when I had encountered them, I was just uh, like, you know, uh, Devoy and Knock, it was just like, oh, like time, like, all right, big pause, holy shit, like, wow. I didn't even know people could rap Mm -hmm. like this at this level, like, this is insane. And then we started like kicking it and I feel like my own uh, music like leveled up as a result of just like being around such a high level of talent and then we started playing shows together and that's and I feel like my music right or like my writing changed and I felt like a little bit more confident and I was like damn like wait I could like really do this and like it was when we started touring we were playing mad shows but I guess to answer your question like a little more directly like one of the defining moments was like I want to say it was maybe like 2015 like maybe like somewhere between 2014 and 2016 um we had gotten booked to play some shows um we had played a show at purchase and then we went to play a show at palisades and i remember the bills so specifically because if a bill like this today were to happen it would be insane like it was uh 99 sublime uh tony or like he was young gutted at the time and ace mo and um, another homie, um, Mika, who, who went under um, uh, Mika Villain. But I'm just like, a bill like that today would be absolutely nuts. And then um, when we got booked for Palisades, to me, that was like a crowning moment because I was like, all of the shows that I had seen at Palisades while it was still open were all of these like amazing top tier shows where it was like, to me, in my mind, like, if you played at Palisades, 
you were probably going to blow up. That's just like how that was. And in my mind, when I think about it, everyone that I've seen play at Palisades is on a crazy trajectory right now. Like, it's just right. insane. So it's like when we had gotten booked to play that, I was like, fuck yeah, like shit is happening. Like, it, <laughs> like it felt so cool. I was like, wow. Like, I just saw like Nick Hakeem play here. I saw like Sonny Moon, like uh, Anna Wise played there. Yeah. And this was like right after... Um, like good kid mad city so it's like her name was like known like people knew who anna wise was right and i have this really funny moment with her too it was hilarious like um this is like after the first or like second time i'd played at palisades and um me and my boy jack we went to go see um sunny moon but at that time it didn't click in my head that like anna wise was in sunny moon we just went to go see them and i, I think nick was playing that show also but um, I remember we were at the bar next door and um, I saw her sound checking, but I didn't realize that that was Anna Wise. And I was like, we saw her sound checking and then um, we went to the bar next door and she like walked in and we were like, yo, like your sound check sounded amazing. Like you were so good. Um, and she was like, oh, like, thank you. And she was super sweet. And um, we were just asking like, oh, is this your first time playing at Palisades? And she was like, yeah. And we were like, oh, yeah, we played there before. It's like a dope spot. Like, you're going to have, like, an amazing time. Like, not even trying to flex, but, like, low-key. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like low-key. A little bit, like, yeah. Just a, just a little bit. And then um, we were like, oh, like, what's your name? And she was like, oh, I'm Anna. Like, nice to meet you. I was like, oh, I'm, like, Mark. And she was like, and it was cool. And then, like, she went to go grab a beer or whatever. And then um, we, st we stayed there for a little bit. And then we were like, oh, like, Sonny Moon's about to hit. And we went. And then I remember when they announced, they were like, yo, like, uh, Anna Wise from, like, Sunny Moon. And I was like, wait, Anna Wise is here? <laughs> and she got on stage, and I was like, I had this, like, oh, shit moment. I was like, oh, my fucking God. Like, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I felt like such a clown. I was like, wow, I played myself. I'm glad I didn't say anything crazy. And, like, she probably didn't even, like, take it in that way. But it was yeah, just, I'm sure it not. Was so funny. I was like, wow, like, that word. <laughs> and this is why you should always be a chill person um right yeah so no funny. that's beautiful man like you just like you just like never know who anyone is most of the time it, 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 like, <laughs> you know, like especially just like considering like she seems so humble you she know is, she was like, super sweet when we met her that's so tight you know and like mm -hmm. before b before we move on to like your solo shit um mm -hmm. you had mentioned earlier uh you had mentioned earlier how you felt like uh poetic thrust had helped uh refine your own music and just like your own style like could you get a little more into that because i'm always i'm always curious about people who i'm always curious about people who like come up in a group dynamic and then i mean like you had already been making music by yourself mm -hmm. for a bit anyway but like you know like coming into a group and then going back out to do your own solo thing like, like most people leave affected in some way so like how did that yeah. how did working with them affect you if you could think about that for sure. Um, it, this is something that I've thought about a lot, actually. Um, coming from like the collective first, like 99 Sublime, and then moving to like the band with uh, Poetic Thrust, I feel like Poetic Thrust made me a better listener. Because um, I think in music, a lot of it is reactionary sometimes, where it's like, okay, this person did this, so that obviously means that I have to do that. And I don't know. I, I think it's given me more of a respect for space in music, especially when you have that many members. I think in, in most bands, it's usually like four, four, maybe five people, uh, like with the front man, but it's like Podicus is seven. And there are elements that not, not clash per se, but it's like vocals and horns are kind of going to be in the same sonic register, just as like some piano textures and guitar gets put in like a similar register. So it's like kind of creating space for other people's ideas to breathe. And I feel like that was like such a big thing because I think I'd already learned to um, to play well with others in a collaborative sense, but um, with Poetic Thrust where it's like, all right, this isn't just like a, it's not like a feature situation. It's like, this is a constant collaboration and a constant need to be listening and attentive to others ideas but also not totally second guessing your own i think if you're feeling something learning to be vocal about certain things and being like oh yeah i felt weird about this change like let's talk about it like why did i feel weird about that oh because 
this thing happened or maybe these moments clashed or something like that. So I think yeah. it coming coming from poetic thrust into like um or I guess not like coming from but doing solo stuff more like newer solo things with the background of poetic thrust I think has made me more intentional about like my production uh more intentional about how I listen um and I guess not being as uh reactional to a particular sonic element when I hear it like giving it the the space and the respect to to sit with it and listen and be like okay what's the emotion that comes from it first what am I trying to say what do I think you guys are trying to say and instead of thinking about someone else's perspective I'm like I can also just ask I'm like yo like right. like you know and that's the that's the real beauty of it I'm like I can just ask um someone had a Mench I think it was someone from the band that had like mentioned this to me and they were like being in a band like that is like is a lot like being in a relationship it's like yeah. a lot of expectation to manage and I think sometimes you you always want to be sensitive to the other people that uh you're creating with because music is a it's an emotional thing but at the same time like not second guessing your own ideas or like being too passive with the things that you feel uh as strongly about and I think when you can get past that barrier, that's when you end up making incredible music where it's like, yo, we, we had a moment, we spoke about it. Maybe we all weren't feeling it, but we knew that we didn't want to sacrifice the energy in, in any sort of way. So we had to overcome this block. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's tricky. I mean, we've, we've made things that we hate. We've made things where like, yo, this is the one we've made tracks where other people are like, yo, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. And to us, we're like, ah, that was like a, low-key throwaway but like whatever you know yeah. it's, it's it's interesting and i think it's very beautiful it's it's still something that um i think about to this day and uh, i'm still very grateful for and uh i'm fortunate to be a part of honestly yeah that's incredible like having that having that emotional intelligence really helps uh really helps bring out the best in your music and you know like going from mm -hmm. going from 99 sublime to poetic thrust and coming back to yourself and making and you know like making a project like talk to me about making tales over tea because that was from like 2016 and like how do you like how do you feel like all of that was applied to the way you made tales for tea tales over tea was actually like pretty hard to make because um it was a it was a book. yeah um it was a it was a pretty transitionary point in in my life like um i had initially started working on it when i first transferred into purchase so I came to purchase in like 2012. So like everyone else was already there. Like I pretty much kind of just like showed up and I was there and it was spring of 2012. So it's like everyone are already had like a year and a semester up on me uh, when I got there. Um, but as I started making it, it was really interesting because I'd always felt like the kind of music I made didn't really fit the narrative of, of the sound palette of Brooklyn at the time. Like you remember, it was the, the pro era stuff, the Flatbush Zombies, the Underachievers. I was yeah, like, I don't really yeah, sound yeah. like those guys. So I don't really feel like welcome or I don't really feel like at home. This is like a lot softer and a little bit more introspective. So um, when I had gotten to, to purchase and I like met the people that I started like uh, working on it with or that became a part of it, um, it was nuts, man. The, the producer for it, the, the kid that produced everything, um, PLC, or he goes by public library commute. He's also blowing up right now, which is crazy. Um, he and I have like a super interesting relationship because I'd met him for the first time in like 2018, maybe. Like we made that whole project before ever meeting each other. He had just wow. heard me on SoundCloud and I heard his stuff and he was like, yeah, man, like I really love your stuff. Like, would it be cool to send you something? And I was like, yeah, which I was recently just bumping all your stuff. And we'd been sending each other like, he was sending me like beats. I was sending him back like tracks over the course of like a year, maybe two or something like that. And um, yeah, it kind of it just came together very beautifully. And I think one day I was like, wait, I think this is done. And then I, it, it's so funny because all these little things were happening at the same time too. Like he was just, um, he was in his senior year of high school. And I remember him being like, yo, can you like help me with my like entrance paper? <laughs> and like, I remember like reading over his like college entrance paper and I was like, this is, this is weird. Not like weird in a bad way, but it's just, it's just like beautiful. 
like, wow, like I have made this deeply beautiful project with someone that I've never met. And now I'm helping him with like college entrance stuff. And I don't know, I, I feel like the process of it was hard because there was a lot of uh, emotional context that went into it. And I feel like finishing it was even harder because it took me maybe like two or three years to do. And at the tail end of it in my like senior year when it came out, um, I was listening to friends that had already like released music and they were kind of leaning into new sonic territory. So I felt behind. I was like, damn, like everyone's doing this like new stuff. Like I have to, for the sake of completing this project, I have to mentally and emotionally keep myself in this, uh, like in this bubble. Like I can't migrate from this energy or this project will never be done. So I have to, I'm intentionally and forcefully keeping myself here. And to like see and hear what my friends are working on, it like hurt. I was like, damn, I, I can't move on until this is done. And um, I remember as soon as I finished it, I like put it out. And I think it, I, it dropped on like Valentine's Day maybe or something like that. And I literally did not listen to it ever again. I went two mm -hmm. years without listening to it, uh, which in that time it like had a weird like SoundCloud like buzz. It got like a couple hundred thousand plays. And I was like, this is nuts. Remember, I, I was not going on sound. Like, I was just ignoring all of it. I was like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I'm done. And then to hear all of the good that came from it, I was like, wow, okay. Another reason that was it was also hard, um, I had made, like, a weird vow to myself. I was like, in my lifetime, I want to make one good album. And this was at the point that I wasn't even taking music seriously. I had, right. like, you know when you make those, like, contractual obligations to yourself? You're yeah. like, I'm going to make one just one good album like that's all i want and i wanted to like reach people and have this crazy impact and then i did it and i was like now i have no idea what to do <laughs> and it was like it was weird because again i was like i'd had these conversations with the homies where i think there was some envy going on i like more so me towards them i was like definitely jealous i was like yo y'all are making like cool shit and i like i don't know what to do like i didn't really think about what i would do after i made this like one album and now I have to like sort of like rebuild and like find myself and like, what do I even like now? Like so many years have passed. Like, what am I into? Like, what kind of, what am I trying to do? So like in rebuilding and figuring out what I liked and recalling all of my influences and the things that I'd observed, I was like, what feels like a good next step? And I had some like singles here and there. And um, I remember I had a project that I was going to drop. I put out two singles. I did a video. And then there was a point that I hit where I was like, I hate all of these songs. I was like, these songs aren't even for me. I'm making these songs for other people. And I don't like that. And I scrapped the project. And I think I recently removed the songs from like online. But yeah, I was like, I, I want to make music for me first. Then other people, it shouldn't be the other way around. And uh, that's how that kind of happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now that makes sense to me. Because, you know, like you look at you look at mirrors and like what you and cartoons did with that and like that mm -hmm. sounds like you know there's a like i let you know, like i hear so much of you in both of them but it's like you at just like two different points because obviously it's also been it you know it's been six years you know like fucking yeah. t came out in 2016 and mirrors came out in 2022 so you know like there's mm -hmm. just like a lot of just like life change and bullshit that went on to that but before we get to mirrors um so, you know, you mentioned you mentioned that you just didn't look at your SoundCloud for two years while T is going crazy. Like, yeah, do you, do you remember when you first went to go look at the reaction and how it felt to see. To see it blow the way it did, because I can was, imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that after being just gone for two years and just like, you know, it, it, you know, it's like sometimes like sometimes I'll like not go on Twitter for three hours just so mm -hmm. I can like just like relish like the oh i got like 20 notifications thing you yeah. know like, <laughs> for but, like sure. but, but like doing that for two years is crazy so like what was that like it was nuts man like i didn't it was like the first point in my life when i realized that i have i can have like a positive impact on people from like far away like near and far it was it was bizarre like i came back to like a shit ton of dms of people being like, yo, like we should collab. People wanting to send me beats. People from other countries being like, man, like 
this project came to me at such a crucial point in my life. Like, I don't even know if you know what you did. And I'm just like sitting here and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I, I had gotten like, bro, I'd gotten label offers, uh, people wanting to like press the album to vinyl. And I just remember being kind of overwhelmed. And I was like, I, I like turned it down pretty hard. I was like, no. And in hindsight, I'm like, shit, I wish I, I did that. Cause like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just precious with that. I was like, this project was like my baby. This is the first time I've done something like this. And I don't know, I kind of, I still feel so deeply attached to it, even though I've fully detached myself to it. Like it's, it's here for people, but like, I don't want to reattach myself to it in that way where I now have to like do these things. But, um, it was, it was a crazy experience. Just the love, the, the reception and to still see it like grow after all these, like people still DM me about that project to this day. And it's I'm like, that's project, weird, bro. bro. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I, I get it. I totally, totally get I it. Like, oh, it's I, bizarre. I have I have I have people reach out to me about like older stuff that I've written and I'm just like damn I wasn't even like really hitting it that crazy yeah but, like, just, you know like, like it's 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 weird it's fucking weird but you know like you did that and that's gonna live with people and mm -hmm. living with that feeling is weird it's strange strange you know and like you know but but then take that and walk me through what happened like so when did cartoons reach out to you? Like, because you know he's he's, he's up there right now. You know, like, so like, so yeah, 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 so, yeah, so like, how did that happen? Did he hit you? Did you hit him? Like, what happened there? It's funny, man. Like, so cartoons and I, we've known each other for for years. He actually had a small stint at Purchase, which I didn't realize. I didn't know him. <laughs> what, what he was didn't have a stint at Purchase, bro. Mm, like, it's so small crazy stint to at me. Purchase. Um, but I remember him saying like, yeah, like, and he like left. But um, I reconnected with him or like connected with him for the first time in um, in Brooklyn, maybe like 20, 2017, I think. Um, my our engineer, uh, this cat, Josh Peter, like dope dude, um, I went to go check him. I, I had helped them move and he started like running sessions again. And um, uh, Cartoons was there one day and he was like, yo, I feel like you guys would make like sick stuff. And Ben was like, yo, man, I. I I peeped your stuff. Like, I, I love your bars. Like, your stuff's crazy. Yeah, I I started making beats recently. I'd love to, like, get up or whatever. And me, I was like, I'm I'm not, like, Hollywood for shit, bro. I was like, I'm down. Like, let's do it. And um, we started having, like, these pretty, like, regular sessions over the course of, like, a year or so. And I distinctly remember, like, being in that first apartment that he was at in Brooklyn. Uh, and at that point, we had already done, like, a ton of tracks. And one day, him being, like, Yo, I think I'm going to start just making like these beat videos, just like I'm going to try to do like one a day. And it was such a crazy turning point because I literally watched him scale his platform. Like I watched it happen from like eight, like maybe like seven, eight hundred followers to like 10,000 in, in maybe like a two years time. And just yeah. like the, the, the palette of his beats taking on their own sound um and it's just cool i feel like he's also someone that's helped me grow as an artist just like taking risks and just like trying new things like embracing my own musicality and um i think mirrors was like at a point where it was like we had done so many tracks already and he was like yeah i think it's time we like make a project like i had i'd appeared on several of his smaller like eps and things He's like, yeah, we should make a project. And I was like, I'm down. And then maybe every Thursday for like a year, I would go to his house and we would like make something. And wow. there's like a ton still in the vault. There's like a ton from like, that's going to probably come out a little bit later, some sooner than others. Um, maybe we just like make like a ton of stuff. I started like making beats too. I'd bring him things and he'd be like, oh, that's hot. Let me like flip this thing. Um yeah, just like really insane how he's like scaled his artistry. Bro, last night uh, at the show, um, I played a few of the tracks and then I was like, oh, yeah, like I did this this album with my boy Cartoons and everyone, you know, people like applaud and they cheer. And then um, I was chatting with people afterwards and this guy was like, you know, Cartoons, like I listened to him religiously and I was like, that's so weird because it's not the first time this has happened to me where someone's like, bro, <laughs> his album changed my life. 
like you know him i got like i have to hear this album with you guys and i'm like bro it's there like when it finds you like no pressure <laughs> but like yeah like yeah it's crazy it's crazy that it's happened and the everything that's come from that also just like bananas you know so whenever you so whenever you decide to put out the rest of the music y'all make y'all made you got to call it 52 thursdays war oh you got you got you got to make that happen that's hard <laughs> okay i'm i'm, I'm, I'm going to write that down real quick <laughs> yeah you, you you like i'm just i'm just stuck on the image of you going over to his place every thursday for a year and that's just like Bruh. i just thought like 52 thursdays like <laughs> just like man it was it was legitimately like every thursday maybe a friday for like a full year and it's crazy because like mirrors maybe took about two years, one of which uh, involved like the um, like me going to his crib and uh, like banging out the tracks. And then the other year was like it was hilarious. Oh, it's funny now. But like the yeah. other year was more like logistic, but also not meeting at all in person. It was all video chat because I Frank, had um, COVID. no, not even because of COVID. Oh, crazy. <laughs> Dude the last vocal session um or like the last yeah the last vocal session of mirrors uh i was leaving his crib and i was like late for the train so i like ran for it and i was going down some stairs and i saw something so i like it was like me like a bottle so i like hopped over it and i missed the step and when i came down my ankle just went i mm. tore the ligaments in my ankle and i like couldn't walk for like four or five months so it's just like taking every meeting from like FaceTime or like Zoom. Oh, <laughs> like, no. yeah. But the rest, like that second year was just like logistic stuff. Like, oh, let's mix it, get it mastered, art, visuals. And more of the visuals rolled out like a year afterwards or like a couple months afterwards. But um, yeah, insane. Wow. Yeah. Nah. And like, you know, that process is wild to me. Y'all clearly have great chemistry. And the thing dog. that really, yeah, no, nah, the thing that really sticks out about mirrors to me is like, like, I feel like this proved it more than anything I've heard you do. Like, you're just, you're so, like, as a rapper, you're so versatile. Like, you can bar <laughs> out, you can do melodies. Uh, you're not afraid to play around with, like, vocal compression and just, like, go completely abstract and, like, you know, like, invite people in to hear something that you might otherwise just, like, spit regularly, but just, like, I got so many different sides of you listening to mirrors and Word. just like really sitting, you know, like even, even just the, uh, hang on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go pull the album up again real quick. Oh, yeah. Even, <laughs> e even, even listening to like, you know, like some of the ones that really stuck out to me, like Fox hunt naturally stuck out to me. Um, fucking come see you stuck out to me. Uh, Indigo stuck out, you, you know, just like, there's just so much, there's so many different sides of you on this project that yeah. it's just like, I, I, I just, I, you know, like I finished it and I was just like, how can, how can one person do so many different things with just like a rap song, <laughs> you know? It, and like, and like none of it sounds forced or labored or like, you know, like more often than not, when like people try to like get into melody, they just sound like drunk Drake and mm -hmm. like, you don't. <laughs> so like that, that, that was, <laughs> that, was that, that was pretty cool to me. You know, I appreciate like, just that. Like, Thank you. That that was that was my main takeaway from listening to mirrors and just like you know like his versatility and your versatility just coming together to make something really unique and interesting. So it's just a dope project. I don't know. I don't have a follow up or a question or anything. I just thought <laughs> no, it was tight. all good. No nah, man, that like mirrors was a game changer for for sure. I think that's when I really began like leaning into like my production or just like I don't know, just it, I feel like it was a new era of like confidence for me. Like um. It's funny that you mentioned like Fox Hunt because um, Fox Hunt, I produced like it. it mm. there's, it's like a crazy story behind it. Like I started taking piano lessons during uh, during COVID, and um, I don't know. Like I was, it's always something that I I used to as like a kid, but I never like stuck with it. And I was like, wait, I want to do this for like my artistry. I want to be like nice. So I started taking lessons again, and I think one day I was like writing progressions, and I came up with that one, and I was like wait this feels good and then I did the drums on it too and then I remember when it, the words came to me so immediately I was like oh shit 
I like called our engineer, our engineer friend, Josh. Uh, I called him. I was like, it was mad early in the morning. I was like, bro, I need to get into the studio like right now. I like just ripped like a fat blunt. I was like, dog, I like need to get in right now. And he was like, I think like, you know where the lockbox is? Like, here's the code, whatever. Like, yeah, bro, all you. And I went in and I laid down all the vocals. And as soon as it was finished, I was like, all right, I know this needs like bass and guitar, but I was also like very, un I was like, I, need I know it needs bass. So I went to Ben for the bass. And I was like, mm, I feel uncertain about it because this is my first time like playing my own progression on my own vocals or like me, you know, it just, it felt weird. I was like, not that confident about it. And then I played it for Ben and he was like, this has to go on the project. Like, this is, this is it. And I was like, you sure? Like, I don't really know. Like, nah, like maybe let's sit on it or whatever. He was like, nah, I'm not even arguing with you about this. Like, then he laid down like the craziest bass and guitar in it. And then we listened back to it and we we're like, nah, this shit is gas, bro. <laughs> this is pretty hot. Uh, it, it just came together real smooth. And then um, fast forward, some homies heard it um, and they were like, you have to let us shoot a video for this. Like, no question. And I remember having this, this moment, like when we were shooting the video, cause we were like out in the woods and it was like, I remember like being deep in the woods and they were like out on the other side, like waiting for the sun to go down. So um, they could get that first shot of me. Like, you know, when I turn around into the camera and I'm like out in the distance singing like the first few lyrics, yeah. like I was out there and like waiting for the playback on the track. And I just remember being so quiet and dark, having this moment like, this is insane. This would have never happened if I didn't decide to like actually just trust myself and like learn piano. I would have never made these chords. This track would have never yeah. happened. Ben would have never believed it. Like Ben would have never heard it, would have never believed in it, but it never ended up on the project. The homies would have never heard it. And it would have not taken the beautiful like visual stance that it has. Like, no, like none of these things would have happened. Yeah, and, and I just remember like was, that video crazy. is ridiculous. By it's the way, nuts, like, it's, man, like, like, <laughs> like, like the like like the fact that y'all managed to put that together on what I imagine is not a huge budget. Like it, Very like it, like budget. it, like it looks like y'all spent bread on it. You know, like it's nice. really incredible how that video turned out. Yeah, man, the the homies like really, really came through. Just like small team, just like eager to shoot too. Like I love those guys. Like shout out my Underhill family, man. Like. They heard it and they were like, nah, like we're all over this one. You gotta let us do it. And um, we like drove out. It was like a 24 hour shoot. We left at like maybe 11 in the morning and we finished at like four or five the next day. And I just remember being like so tired, but like it, it was like an overnight shoot. And I just remember being like so tired. It wasn't my first time doing something like that, but I was like, I can't be sleepy because like these guys are going hard for me right now. Let me just have some yeah. done and like get to it. Um, yeah, just fantastic. <laughs> um, gum perk you up like that? You just let me have some gum and that. And yeah, that just like the, the mintiness. I mean, I also okay. had some okay. like beer and pizza too. <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> I was like, and, and I also smoked weed, <laughs> but the gum. It was the mintiness. I was like, all right, like I'm up, like cool. That's Let's, hilarious. You need me for this shot? All right, I'm in there um yeah man they they blessed it so it's just it's it's crazy the things that will take shape when you really just believe in yourself in a nutshell really? you know i mean you know you could say the same bro i've been i've been watching or not watching but like listening to the real notes for like a minute and it's just i didn't realize the scale of how many you have there are so many bro like and I feel like one day you were just like, yeah, I'm just start doing this. Like the artists that you have, like the range of artists is crazy. The amount of real notes that you have is crazy. Like I was just scrolling through it the other day because I was telling someone about it. I was like, yeah, I like, I just catch myself like listening to it every now and then an episode drops. I'm like, let me yeah. tap in. I'll like clean my room or something like that, clean my space. And then I'm just like, I didn't realize like how many there were. You, bro, you have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like that's great. Yo. <laughs> That's fly. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, I just I just look back and I think we're at like one somewhere between like 110 and 115. 
total, you know, like, and, and yeah, no, I start, I started this. Yeah. It's been two and a half years, something mm-hmm. like that. Cause I, cause I started it my birthday in 2021. So yeah, it's, been, it's, it's, it's been, it's, it's been about two and a half years and yeah, no, nah, you know, it's just like, you, I, I, uh, I try to, I try, I try to be about it. I try to, I try to be the type of person who just like, if I say I'm going to do a thing, I'm going to do it. And I mean, you know, the fact that the fact that we've taken it this far is super tight. And I appreciate anyone who listens and just like, has been around. It's, 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 it's been, it's been, it's been one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done in my life. So, you mm-hmm. know, it's, 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 it means a lot to hear that, you know, yeah, bro. it means a ton. I can't wait to see like, how it scale bro i mean like i think about it in the same context that i think about like something like selection remember this just started with like a small group of people like uploading shit to soundcloud <laughs> right and yeah. now it is like this global household name they have parties in like different countries and like djs that sit in and like white labels and like all this shit and i'm like hey bro sky is the limit and th- <laughs> it's something that i believe in and i'm i'm happy to to have witnessed and now be a part of so thank man. you thank you no oh, man I'm, I'm not gonna put myself at that level but i appreciate i i i appreciate that it's on i'm gonna put you there if you don't put you there <laughs> thank you man <laughs> um but fucking before um before we officially wrap this up um yo if your life was a movie what would it be about Ooh. wow okay if my life was a movie, hmm, hmm, I feel like I'm going to get macro, then I'm going to get micro. I feel oh. like if my life was about something, it would have to be some sort of like aquatic life. Like yeah. that's the setting that I would put it in somewhere, like maybe deep beneath the sea or something like that. Just something aquatic. There's just something about like water where I'm like, I see that. Ah, as for the micro, the fine details, huh? I don't want to sound corny and say like a coming of age story, but like, mm-hmm. I feel like it would, it would sort of have those vibes where it's just maybe not coming of age, but just like deep discovery of self. Like, like, um, what's the, what's the word? Um, like, like excavation. Like I would probably be like. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe like an archivist or like anthropologist, like excavating something until I stumble upon something that changes my life in an incredible way and allows me to communicate with different types of people or creatures. And I don't know. I feel like, wow, that, wow, that's a crazy question. Cause I've never really thought about it that deeply, but I'm, this is this is a question that's gonna stick with me for a couple of days. That's funny. I'm like I'm stumped by it, but this is I really want to give this some thought. I'm a I'll leave with that, but I will I'll probably like text you on the side and be like, yo, this is like the real answer now. Like yeah, no, nah, like yeah, now that you question. said it, now that you said it, I need it. Thank you. Yeah, um, that's a great question. Thank you. Yeah, no, nah, like that's a it, it's it's like a you know, because like a lot of people answer it. They tend to answer it different ways. Like some people will say, like, my life is like these three or four movies. Or, you know, like they'll be like you and just like give an example of or, or like dig even deeper and just like create their own. That isn't just like, yeah, my life would be like it'd be like paid in full. Which like great, mm. you know, like we love paid in full. But um, you know, like it, it's I, I'm like I love that question so much because everyone who answers it always asks or like. I never get the same type of answer when I ask it. So it's always fun just to, just to see what people can come up with in the moment. Um, yeah. Actually, I got it. My life would be about architecture. There we I go. I thought about the things that, I would, that I'm really into, where if I had like, if I had chosen like a different career path, not to say that it can't happen in this lifetime, but I feel like it would probably be about like architecture with like different materials, like maybe traveling the world and studying different architectural styles and trying to build into different environments like how would I build like a beautiful architectural piece or home in like this remote part of the world like what would that look like how would it interact with the environment like 
let's say I want to build it in the Arctic. Like, I feel like I would want some part of the home to interact uh, with the ocean in which fish can freely maneuver through the house, like an aquarium or something like that, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's, it would probably be like that. Yeah, no, you'd be like Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou without all the, without the twee aesthetic. There we go. Really there it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about that. I'm about that. <laughs> yeah, that's um, it. Son, thank you so much for being here. Like this was this was this was eye opening, and like once again, you know, like I'm I'm really proud. You know, like as someone who's known you for a good minute, like I was just talking to somebody recently about how many. Pe- it might have been Gang actually. Shout out to Gang if he's listening. Yeah, um, man. Shout out to it, Gang for real. He, I gotta tap in with him more, but this shit is he insane, too, bro. Wow. Yeah, just just, just, just just like the the amount of things that he does for so many different people and for himself is just everything PTP. Shout out to all of them. But like, Oof, but, but like, I was, I, I was talking to him or somebody else about like how many people I know, like that I've that, that that I've like either met or reconnected with through music that I found out that we either mm-hmm. went to purchase at the same time or they went to purchase at some other point. But like, you know, like y'all and you like i've really gotten to like watch you grow into into like this you know you 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 know, you, you know you're like you were always dope from jump but like just mm-hmm. to see what you've done with cartoons and what you've done by yourself and just like you getting recognized for this shit is really dope to me you know like as someone that i like went to literally went to school with so it's nuts and you know just like you you, you just you just I'm just proud of you. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm rambling, but I'm I'm, I'm no, proud of you. I'm bro, it honestly yeah. means the most to me to like to have had you been there and to have you still here and to see where we will both go from here. Like it's a journey that I'm honestly so excited about. Like the show last night was crazy and just revealed more to me than I like realized with how people like interact with my music, especially like outside of New York too. I'm like people right. outside of New York like listen to me and like it's I, it, it's like a wild thing that I'm still like wrapping my head around but I'm also like I'm I'm excited for where I go next. I think this journey is just going to be so beautiful and interesting. Like other countries are on the table. Like I'm working with a lot of cool UK artists. Yeah. Which I like I mean I'll I'll tell you more about that. Like I'm, I'll like just call you and tell you about it. Like just all the right, totally. that's happening but you know, it's it, it's beautiful. I'm I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. I'm grateful above above all, and I'm 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 excited to see what happens next, man. It's gonna be yeah, tight. Man. <laughs> and we and we move like through all of it. We move. we move. Thanks for listening. Shout out to y'all for making it this far, and shout out to all the black people listening too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One. <laughs>